What's up everybody, Tom the Dilettante here. Hope you're all doing well. Today, we've got a rear brake job to do on the 2019 Subaru Crosstrek. Now, the nice thing about this job is you don't really need a whole lot of fancy tools. I'm gonna to be using a little tool kit that I got from Home Depot, as well as a couple other things that you can pick up at almost any tool store. Some needle nose pliers and a clamp. Now, chemicals that we're gonna need are of course gonna be some brake clean and my favorite nut buster, the PB Blaster. I'll also be using a little bit of disc brake quiet, which you can pick up at almost any auto parts store. First thing I like to do before any job is to spray down any fastener that I'm going to be loosening with the PB Blaster. On the back of the caliper, you're gonna see two pairs of bolts. You have two 14 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper assembly to the bracket, and then you have two 17 millimeter bolts here and here that hold the bracket onto the hub. Now, one thing I like to do is to shake this around to make sure that it's a little loose. Otherwise, after you pull this off, it's gonna be difficult to take the caliper off the rotor. Since mine moves, I think we're good to go. So let's loosen it up. and the caliper will come right off. And you can basically just set this up on the upper control arm out of the way for the time being. Now, one thing I like to do is drop my bolts. One thing I like to do is take the bolts that I remove and put them back into the holes from which they came. This way, I'm not gonna lose them, one, and two, I'll always know where they go. Next, we're gonna remove the two 17 millimeter bolts to remove the brake pad bracket off of the hub. Last of the two 17 millimeter bolts off, and then this bracket will come off with a little bit of persuasion. The pads are gonna be close to the rotor, and sometimes if your rotor's worn like mine is, and you have a little bit of a rusted lip, it might take a little persuading to get off of that lip. Once again, I'm gonna take my bolts, put them back from which they came, so I don't lose them. And you can see here, these pads are really worn, and I was definitely due for a new set. So this we're gonna set aside because I'm gonna take it into the shop, clean it up, and then load it with the new pads. But first, we also wanna make sure that we can get the rotor off. Now, one nice thing about these rotors is that it might not come off super easy because it's probably rusted to the flange. I mean, I live in the Chicago area, so a super rust belt. But Subaru provides these two holes here. Now, these are eight millimeter by 1.25 thread pitch. What you do is you get yourself a couple eight millimeter by 1.25 bolts, thread them into these holes, walk them in, and it's gonna press the rotor right off of the hub. Thread these in, tighten it down. You're gonna hit resistance and you're basically gonna keep tightening until you see it pop off and then walk it off. There it goes. And we're popping off. There you go. Rotor is off and it is nasty. Now, like many vehicles, this has disc rears, but the parking brake is actually a drum brake. So we're gonna quickly inspect the drum brake. You should not see a whole lot of wear and tear here because after all, it's not like you've been dragging it, hopefully, unless you're a drifter. But mine look great. I'm just gonna clean them off. And for that, we're gonna use copious amounts of brake clean. You know, it's actually not uncommon for me to go through an entire can of brake clean per side or per brake when doing these, but uh, yeah, keep it clean. Okay, back in the shop. Before we disassemble and start cleaning this uh, brake pad assembly, let me show you what we're replacing our brakes with. I've got a couple of uh, Dynamic Friction Company 5000 advanced brakes. Now, I didn't go all, all crazy and spend a shit ton of money on my brakes. I didn't buy the cheap ones. I uh, didn't buy the really expensive ones. These I was just searching around online and they seem to be middle of the road. Now, I've already done one side uh, prior to making this video just so I knew what the hell I was doing. And this is what the pads look like. You can see here, this is the pads that came off. <laughs> and this is what they're supposed to look like. So I was definitely due for some pads. Now the rotors I got are from the same company. I think I got it as a kit. I'll put a link to it in the description below. I'm not affiliated, don't make anything off of it. It's just more for your awareness of what I got. Um, but also, it didn't go with the cheap ones, didn't go with the super expensive ones. These are billed as carbon alloy brake rotors. So they are drilled, they are slotted, uh, they're nice and clean. It has yet to be seen how well they were performed, but we'll do that by the end of this video. Anyway, point is that these things are fairly common and easily available, and there's a ton of options to choose from. I'm no expert insofar as how to choose the right brake or pad combo, but um, these are more for practical reasons. I, I got them because they weren't super expensive, and as you can see, I just need them. 
Anyway, onto this brake pad assembly. What we're going to do is we're going to remove the pads first, and then we're going to remove these little shims that we've got here because we're going to clean these off. Your pads slide on these shims in and out as they engage and disengage the brake, and you want to be able to, they want you want them to be able to do that freely. So we're going to clean all this off. Another thing you're going to need for this is going to be a wire brush. This is a cheap Harbor Freight wire brush, one large, one small, because we're going to use that to clean off the crud from those slides. And another thing you're going to want to do is make sure that these caliper slides also move freely. Because if they're stuck, that means your caliper might be binding and dragging a brake uh, or, and or not engaging correctly. So mine are moving smooth. That's a good sign. I don't have the need to disassemble these, which would require taking off these boots and pulling these out and uh, re-greasing them. All right, with these pieces removed, we're going to hit these as well as that bracket where they rest with a wire brush. Clean them up real good. You can see here a before and after. You know, it's not super clean. I told you we're going to try to do this with relatively minimal tools. So I'm just using these cheap wire wheel, uh, wire brushes. But if you have a wire wheel or a bench grinder with a wire wheel or something like that, that could be very helpful. Just don't do like I've done before and uh, fold this up to the wire wheel and end up slinging it into the next zip code. Definitely use pliers and uh, use reasonable pressure and technique. Yeah, anyway. Anyone who's had a wire wheel launch a bolt under uh, something across the shop knows what I'm talking about. Now, I'm kind of an anti-seize whore. I love to use this stuff. I didn't mention it earlier as far as the chemicals that you need because quite honestly, I feel like every shop needs to have some on hand. Anyway, I'm gonna use some anti-seize and basically coat the areas that these slides are going to sit on. And then I'm going to coat the slides themselves. So first we're gonna paint this on a little bit now, whether this is right or wrong, I can't really say 100%. This is the way I've been doing brakes for many years, and I'm still here, I haven't died, um, and it's worked out well for me. All right, we're gonna set that aside. Next, we're gonna prep the pads themselves. Now, when I'm handling brakes, I like to make sure I'm using a clean set of rubber gloves because you don't want all the grease and crap on your fingers to get into the pads, or the rotors for that matter, and contaminate them. Because brake jobs are messy. You got brake dust, grease, and all sorts of crap, and so a clean set of rubber gloves will help prevent you from contaminating the pads and rotors. Now, these pads are probably good to go as is, but one thing I like to use is a little bit of disc brake quiet, and for that, we're gonna go ahead and apply a little bit on the back here, rub it in, Smear it around and let that set for about 10 minutes per the instructions. And again, this is stuff you can pick up at almost any parts store. Now that the disc brake quiet has had a chance to get a little tacky, we're going to take our bracket and we're going to load the bracket so that it's ready to slip over the new rotor uh, for a quick and easy install. The pads should just slip right in from whence they came. I get them set up just towards the outer edge. And one thing you gotta make sure you do is don't get any of the damn anti-seize on the pads themselves or the rotor because it's anti-seize that kind of defeats the purpose of brakes. So that's why I'm always using rubber gloves. This is my second set already because I already had crap and I'm about to put a third set on when I put the rotor on because, well, I don't want to get anti-seize on my rotor. Now there's one last thing we need to do before we start putting everything back together and that's to compress the piston back into the caliper because as is, as worn as those brake pads were, we're never going to get this caliper over the new pads and rotor. So we're going to push this back in. Now, a lot of folks will just take the old pad and a clamp and shove it back in, push the fluid back up into the master cylinder. I've heard mixed things about that one. While it can be done, and I've certainly done it before, I've been told, and I don't know if it's true, that shoving the fluid back in there might screw up the valving in the master cylinder. And I've heard some people say that they've ruined master cylinders that way. So. What we're going to do is we're going to loosen the bleeder and we're going to compress the piston back in and let the fluid bleed out of the bleeder. Then close the bleeder tight and we'll be set to go. So we're just going to use an old pad, put that right there, get our C-clamp and use it to compress the piston back into the caliper. Once you get it tight, you can either begin clamping it down and shove the fluid back up into the master cylinder or like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the bleeder and then just drain the fluid that way. So we're going to pop the bleeder. and crank down on the piston and get brake fluid all over my gloves. And then lose the wrench into my shit bowl. All right, there we go, it's clamped down. I'm gonna tighten this up, get my hands dirty, tighten the bleeder. And because we did not let any air into the system, everything was coming out, we should not need to bleed the brakes. 
remove your clamp, old pad will fall out. Now your caliper is ready to go over a new set of pads and rotor. All right, we're gonna take our new rotor with clean hands and set it on place. All right, one quick thing to note as it starts to rain on me. Make sure you're taking the little rubber dust cap off the old rotor if it didn't come with a new one and putting it in place as well. Well, I guess I'm done working on the car for a little while. To all you warriors out there who work on your cars outside, I salute you. Okay, where were we before it started to piss on us? We put the rotor on and we put the little dust boot on. Next, we're gonna take the brake pad bracket assembly that we put together earlier with the cleaned up sliders, the pads, and some anti-squeak. We're gonna put that on next, right over the new rotor. From here on out, it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna put this on, it should slip right over the rotor. Notice that I already put some anti-seize on these bolts. Run the bolts in by hand for now. We'll tighten them up a little bit later. And then use your fingers to compress the pads loosely against the rotor. This will make it easier for us to put the caliper on, which is the next step. All right, we're almost done. All we have to do now is tighten down those four bolts, the caliper bracket and then the caliper bolts themselves. Now, I've done many a brake job where I've simply tightened them down with German torque, good and tight. Uh, but I do happen to have torque wrenches, so I'm going to torque them down to spec. Now, when I've, to when I've not torqued them down, I've never had a problem, and I did say that this is going to be for people who have just regular tools, and you might not have a torque wrench. So, if you decide to just tighten them down by hand, uh, use your best judgment, but you do assume all responsibility for whatever happens. Now, according to the internet, which, as we all know, never steers you wrong, the torques for these bolts are going to be 19.9 foot-pounds for the caliper body, and 81.1 foot-pounds for the mounting bolts for the caliper bracket. Now, I got these off of a Subaru XV forum, found them in multiple posts, and then corroborated it with another source. So, I don't have a service manual, that's just how I do it. If you're going to end up torquing things down, I highly recommend you find a couple sources, or better yet, a service manual, especially one from the dealer, as it's just going to, you know, be accurate. But, nonetheless, let's get these torqued down. Click, click. Click, click. One tip, if you're not using a torque wrench and you're putting it on, you know, I like to go maybe until it makes contact and about a quarter turn more. Uh, general rule of thumb is if you're tightening it and then suddenly it starts to loosen, you went too far. Last note on torque wrenches. If you do like to work on your car, I do highly recommend them. I, yeah, they're a bit of an investment. I got mine from Harbor Freight. I actually got the Icon brand series. Um, and I do have one Snap-on 3.8 one that I got from my father. I use these things a lot, and they do buy me the peace of mind when I'm doing something like chassis or engine or whatever, to know that things are actually torqued down to spec and are less likely to fail because of my dumbass having over or under tightened something. All right, that's all there is to it. These brakes are actually not that hard to do as long as they're not like completely frozen. So all that's left to do is do the same thing on the other side, put the tires back on, and uh, take it for a test drive. And then finally, because we did bleed out some fluid, check to make sure your master fluid is full. If it's not, then just top it off with the recommended brake fluid. In my case, that's DOT3 from a sealed container. All right, we're changed out of our nasty coveralls into something that's worthy of sitting in the seat, and we're about to test the brakes. So what I like to do, start the car first, and you're gonna pump the brakes, they will be soft, they're going to go down to the floor until you get enough fluid in and compress those uh, calipers back up against the pads. Once you do that, it shouldn't take more than one to two pumps, your brake should go back to feeling normal. Mine feels great, so check, works there. Next I'm going to go ahead and put it in drive and engage the e-brake, and I should not go anywhere. That's a test to make sure that the emergency brake is still working. Uh, brake, brake light comes on, I'm not going anywhere, I can give it a little bit of gas, and I'm not going anywhere. Number two, check. Next, I'm going to pull forward in my driveway a little bit before hitting the main streets, hit the brakes, test. I do stop. <laughs> That's good. I'm going to put it in reverse, do the same thing, go backwards. I stop. I don't feel like I'm using front brakes only. I can feel the rear brakes engaging. You can especially feel that when you're going in reverse. The ass end should dive when you uh, hit the rear brakes, and mine does just that. No squeaking so far. So, I think we are ready to take it on the road. So out of an abundance of caution, I like to take my test drives on a side street first before hitting a main street. 
And as I'm driving here, I'm gonna hit the brakes. Everything seems to be working as advertised. No clicks, no clunks, no squeaks, no squeals. Number three, check. Now it does behoove you to have your windows open when you do this so that you can actually hear what's going on outside. Your brakes are gonna make, you know, some dragging, some maybe some clicks if you left something loose, some squeaks. Um, eh, basically just so you can hear it. All right, let's hit the brakes hard. Whoa. All right, brakes work and ABS work. Good to go. In closing, rear brakes, easy to do. Uh, rear drums, a little harder. Got to worry more about springs and all this other bullshit. Uh, but disc brakes with a drum e-brake, provided you don't need to change the e-brake hardware, just as straightforward as what I showed you. Now, in my experience, um, a lot of these are pretty much the same. Maybe different size bolts, uh, different number of bolts, different torques, of course. But the theory, the general application of brakes, calipers, pistons, pads, rotor, right? Push together, fluid, hydraulic pressure, yada. So if you understand the premise of how these things work, then a lot of these skills and how to change brakes are very portable. So hopefully you learned something today. I was happy to share it with you. Rear brakes done. I should get another 30,000 miles of life out of those. Next, I need to check the front brakes and see how bad those look. But that will be for another day, another video. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch. Hope you enjoyed this. My name is Tom the Dilettante. Until the next time, keep on tinkering and keep on learning. Have a good one.